to go. So hello everyone, my name is Ryan Kenny and I've been sober for eight days now. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. I'm actually here to talk about lightweight text editors. Lightweight in this context just means uh, minimal startup time, resource usage, and scope. So let's start with the command line. Um, now most of you have heard of and or used Vim. Uh, Vim started as VI back in 1976 and then became VI Improved or Vim in the early 90s. Uh, while it's packed full of useful features and endlessly configurable, it's still considered to be a lightweight editor. Uh, Vim is the go-to text editor in a headless environment, helped by the fact that it's guaranteed to be on any Linux box. And, like Tom always says, it's easy to be the best when you're the only one in town. Still, it's not every text editor that lets you write your own syntax highlighting or execute arbitrary bash commands. So, moving on to Emacs, direct competitor of Vim, uh, GNU Emacs, the one people use now, came out in uh, 1985, though the original Emacs was born at the same time as VI. So you're looking, you know, 1970s. Uh, most have either used Emacs or know of it from the great Unix text editor wars. Uh, like Vim, it's powerful and endlessly extensible to the core. Uh, there are differences between the two, but the types of people that use these editors uh, tend to be one and the same. And as if command line editors needed to be more lightweight, there's Nano. Nano is for people that are on a headless environment and just want to edit text. They don't need to show everyone how smart they are, and they don't need syntax highlighting for that new markup language they wrote last week. Uh, Nano is nice because it gives you the basic commands at the bottom of the screen. Really cool if you don't need to edit uh, from the command line too often. Um, however, until July 2014, undo and redo were considered experimental features that you had to enable via a flag. Yeah, experimental features, undo and redo, you know. Fast forward to 2003, we figured out how undo, redo, and GUIs work, and we've got Notepad++. This guy comes with numbered lines, syntax highlighting, collapsible blocks for a ton of languages, uh, fast startup, macros, and plugins that'll do anything else. It also keeps track of the files you had open so that they're loaded the next time you start it up. This may sound trivial by today's standards, but it was impressive at the time. Um, downsides, Windows only. And every time you update Notepad++, you gotta download and reinstall the entire application. Uh, but in 2011, we saw the arrival of Sublime Text. It's open source, multi-platform, and lets you open directories instead of just files. Some big wins over Notepad++. Uh, I find their package control system to be kind of difficult, but to be <coughs> fair, I've only used the evaluation version. Yeah, so it costs 70 bucks, uh, but licenses are good for the entirety of a major version. They had 2.x out for about three years before 3.x, so assuming a fixed cost, it's about $23 a year. So hopefully some of you can afford that. Um, Adam, the former OSX exclusive, released their 1.0 version in mid-2015. So they've been around before that. Uh, as with Sublime, you can load a directory instead of individual files, something that used to differentiate IDEs. Uh, it was made by the GitHub folks, and they say they tried to improve on some things they found frustrating with other editors, uh, hence, you know, Electron, the, what you've heard about the past five minutes. Because, you know, everyone loves JavaScript, right? On the, uh, the Git support is pretty top-notch. Um, moving on from that, we have Visual Studio Code, which came out at around the same time as Adam, uh, 2015. Um, this one is very similar to Atom, especially since it's built on Electron, so go figure. Uh, at this point, we've dropped all pretexts of being anything but an IDE. Uh, it, every feature is geared towards editing code. Many of you mic Microsoft haters are going to find it hard to believe, but, this, the, but Visual Studio Code easily outperforms the competition, Atom included. It's an Electron app, so it's just as extensible as its competitors, making it the true hallmark of lightweight editors. Um, so front-end technology and front-end technology users helped influence the formation of IDE lights. Uh, given the constantly evolving ecosystem, developers were looking for editors that were powerful and knew the basics of what they wanted to do, but allowed them to work with the latest stuff. Uh, developers tend to be younger and care more about look and feel, so it's no surprise they created an editor ecosystem as volatile and fresh as their own. Um, after all, these IDEs are based on front-end technologies and actually live in the browser sometimes, leading us to cloud IDEs. Sure, why not? Uh, the use is just kind of niche, but it's new and promising. These originated simply as web interfaces to editing code, but they've evolved into more than that. Um, cloud IDEs like Code Envy actually use Docker containers to deploy an entire environment for you. So we've covered a lot of stuff, and based on my experience, I like to use Atom or Visual Studio Code for quick views and edits, but obviously if you want build support, you should use a real IDE like Max is suggesting here. Um, so then, as for the command line, I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you that the need for Vim and Emacs proficiency is decreasing. Uh, they probably won't go away. Hell, we've had GUIs for a long time, and they've still been holding out. But there are so many cool things out there now that I think you're better off exploring the new rather than dwelling on the old. Um, that's all I got. Hope you enjoyed it. The end. Yeah, thank you.